Hi, my name is Trevor Sullivan, a Microsoft MVP for Windows PowerShell and an independent consultant working with the Microsoft Azure Public Cloud Platform and the PowerShell Automation Framework. Today I wanted to talk to you about PowerShell version 5 classes and why you should use them. Classes essentially allow us to encapsulate an object and a series of operations that can be performed on that object into a single entity. So for example, we might be building an application where we need to represent a person, or a server, or a network switch, or some sort of managed entity. And rather than declaring that object using the older PowerShell version 2 and later uh, PS custom object syntax, we can actually build a class that represents what the object would look like as a template, and then we can actually instantiate the class to create an actual instance of the uh, template that we've built. So one of the, one of the templates that I kind of like to use as an example when I talk about classes is a car. So the first thing that we want to do is basically say I'm building a blueprint for a car and we do that by using the class keyword and then providing an identifier after that keyword. Inside the body of the class we can specify two different things. Properties, and properties are things that describe the car, things like color, weight, width, length, height, uh, different things like that, you know, maybe a brand. And so properties are descriptors of the object. And then methods are things that you would actually do with the object. So something you might do with a car is drive it, clean it, um, a variety of other things, right? So you can, you, can, you can do different things with a car. You might open a door, right? Um, so those are actions that would be performed on the car. So let's start by defining some properties that represent the car's state. So for example, we might specify a string property that contains the car's color. We might also specify a string property that has the car's name. So maybe we want to name our car. We can also specify an integer and say, let's call it the length of the car. We can specify another one called width. And then finally, a third integer for height. And you know whether this measurement is in inches or centimeters or whatever unit of measurement we want, it doesn't really matter. We just need to basically say uh, we need some property to store the length, width, and height of the car. Um, as far as how we actually interpret those to the end user of this class kind of depends on what the unit of measure is, but at this point it's really irrelevant. Let's just assume that for now it's inches. So we can also specify methods. So now that we've de de defined the blueprint for what a car would look like, so it's got a color, it has a name, it has a length, a width, a height, and let's actually add um, brand in here, or uh, let's call it manufacturer. And then finally, let's just do a model property, okay? So we're also going to create things called methods, and methods are actions that are performed on the object that we're working with. So um, one more property I'm going to add here is an integer called mileage, and that's just going to store the mileage of the vehicle over its lifetime. Okay, so now we're going to define a method called drive. And the drive method is simply going to add miles to the car's mileage. So the way that we do that is to declare a method, we call, uh, we specify a return type for the method because methods can return objects after they're finished executing. Um, so in this case, we're actually going to return void, which means that we're, we're returning a null value. Uh, in a future example, we might take a look at a scenario where a method would return uh, uh, an actual value. But then you specify the name of the method and then you specify the method's input parameters. So in this case, because we're actually going to drive the car, we have to tell it how far we're going to drive. So we're going to declare an input parameter, which is an integer called mileage. Now, what happens when we drive the car? This is the body of the method. So we actually have to tell PowerShell when we drive the car, what do we expect to happen? Well, practically speaking, we expect the car's mileage to increase by the amount that we drive. 
So if the car currently has 20,000 miles and we drive 50, then it'll have 20,050 miles on it. So the way that we represent this in code is we refer to the current object or the current instance of the object, which we don't have yet because this is just a blueprint, right? A class is a blueprint. It's not an actual car. It's simply the blueprint of how we would build a car. So until we actually instantiate the class, we're not actually working with an actual car. We're just saying what a car would do if it existed. So in this case, we refer to the current instance when we have one by using the this variable. Now the this variable is only valid in the context of a method body, right? If we use the this variable outside of our class, it doesn't have any meaning. It'll just return null. So <clears throat> what we need to do is basically say this car's mileage property is going to increase by the mileage that we passed in as a parameter. So now that we've defined a blueprint for a car, um, we can now instantiate the car by using square brackets around the class name and then putting two uh, semicolons or two, two colons, not sorry, not semicolons, and then we call the new method. Now the new method is a special type of method called a constructor, which we'll talk about uh, separately. So for now, we're just going to create a new car. So we're actually taking that blueprint of the car, we're creating a new car from it, and we're going to assign that car to a variable called my car. So if I just hit F5 to run this in the PowerShell ISE, I've now declared this variable that contains a car. So now I can drive that car. Well, let's, let's first look at the properties of it. So all the properties are just initialized to either a zero or an empty string or null, right? Because we haven't actually declared what those properties are yet. So in this case, we're going to actually drive the car, let's say 12 miles. And if we drive the car 12 miles and then take a look at the car again, we can see that its mileage is now 12. Now we can also set the car's properties. And the way that we do that is simply by using dot notation. So we can say my car dot manufacturer equals BMW. Um, my car dot model equals 135IS. So now if we take a look at my car, it still has 12 miles on it. And my car is now a BMW 135IS. So this is the very basics of building a class. There's the properties that represent the state of the object. There's methods that allow us to perform actions on the object. And then in another video, we'll talk about some more of the more in-depth concepts. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.